Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. So the crypto market here, 260.7 billion, and uh, everything's up just a little bit. Bitcoin up 0.93%, Ethereum up 0.26%, and XRP up 0.74%. So the market uh, just, uh, you know, moving its way up slowly but surely. We saw this trend dip a few days ago, and Bitcoin is recovering. Guys, this is Bitcoin on the daily uh, and the same goes for XRP. We are seeing a bit of a recovery here, but not too much movement in the space. Uh, there is quite a bit of volume, uh, but traders, buyers and sellers are happy at the price that they are trading at. We are still waiting to see the buying and selling pressure of Bitcoin mainly uh, to go out of whack before we start seeing numbers soar. So the status quo as of now, we still need to break uh, that $10,000 mark for Bitcoin, roughly uh, 10 and a half, 10,487 per BTC. That's the next level of resistance. And then it is that $14,000 mark. Once we break those two, we could see alts go up as well. I could see XRP soar uh, past this 34 cent mark. And as I was saying in previous videos, uh, it's looking as though this time around, XRP and other alts are finding their footstep in and along Bitcoin uh, earlier on, way back in the early days, or rather, not the early days, but maybe three years ago or so, it took a while for people to gain confidence in altcoins. Uh, most people were putting their money into Bitcoin, and then we saw alts lag after that. When people were taking their money out of Bitcoin, they were putting them into alts to make some more money. And we saw Bitcoin acting as the leading indicator. Uh, but now we're starting to see alts, and I think this is partially because... The market is more mature. People have more uh, insight, more education on their cryptocurrency of choice, whether it be XRP, Chainlink, VeChain, EOS, whatever coin it is, a lot of these guys are now moving along with Bitcoin as opposed to just kind of chilling out, waiting for Bitcoin to do its thing, and then moving as an afterthought of people taking their money out of Bitcoin and putting them into alts. I think that this uh, bull run will look very, very different than the last one in a lot of ways. In some ways, it'll look the same. Uh, but of course, no one has a crystal ball, so no one knows for sure. Saw this from XRP Crypto. Will Federal Reserve reports record-breaking figures as consumer spending and industrial production nosedive in April, guys. So the Federal Reserve has released its latest data on the economy detailing how the beer flu pandemic has affected consumer spending and industrial production in the United States, which has been hard hit by the infectious disease. The U.S. continues to lead the world in total number of confirmed cases and deaths at 1.4 million and 86,851 respectively, according to the Johns Hopkins University. Uh, the government report confirms that consumer spending took a precipitous plunge as shoppers stayed at home observing widespread lockdowns, coping with a sudden downturn in income or facing unemployment, with sky-high layoffs, shops and restaurants shuttered, ongoing uncertainty about jobs and changing prospects for earning a living wage, retail sales slid a record 16.4% in April, worse than the 12.3% predicted by economists. So guys, these were April numbers, we're halfway into May, and the trajectory is downward. Uh, it doesn't look like the economy is getting better anytime soon, that said, uh, in some states and some countries around the world, they are starting to ease measures. So what's going to happen? Well, as of now, it doesn't look too promising. And have you guys noticed, this is just a bit of a sidebar, have you guys noticed, uh, I don't know if uh, you guys are shopping on Amazon at all, that the shipping prices have skyrocketed due to this pandemic. I'm finding a lot of vendors are charging through the roof for shipping now because they realize people can't go to stores and we're kind of at their mercy. Kind of a scummy thing to do, don't you think? I uh, don't know if you guys have noticed that as well. Put it in the comments if you have. So the economy's a mess. Uh, people aren't working and the beer flu pandemic is still making headlines around the world. But Amazon readers are buying Bitcoin and blockchain bestsellers. So this is an interesting trend we're seeing. Uh, some of the top bestsellers on Amazon are books about monetary policy and Bitcoin and blockchain. So Bitcoin and blockchain are dominating Amazon's bestseller list for books on money and monetary policy. The emerging technology is the subject of half of the titles currently in the top 10 at the time of writing, grabbing four of the top five rankings. So get this guys, uh, the deficit myth, modern monetary theory and the birth of the people's economy. Uh, as one of them and life after Google, the fall of big data and the rise of the blockchain economy. Uh, so interesting to see that blockchain monetary policy books, some of the best sellers, obviously this is what's on people's mind. And this is important, even if it is about Bitcoin and you do not care about Bitcoin because this gets people interested in cryptocurrencies as a whole. If we're seeing this trend, I don't know if these are just uh, US numbers or if this is worldwide, but if this is a trend, this is a trend we want to see. This is a trend in the right direction 
because this is what's going to bring the crypto market up, okay? People's interest, it's gaining mainstream attention. This is all good. Grabbing the fourth spot is the audiobook version of Sefiden Ammon's The Bitcoin Standard, the decentralized alternative to central banks. The author explores the new standard of banking that Bitcoin can offer society by ending the government's monopoly of money and creating a world where currency is unhampered by borders and politics. Quite an ideological view on that. Um, but will this, and guys, hear me out here, because people are going to read these books, some people are going to really, really believe in this anarchist currency, and they really might get into cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Monero, so on and so forth, but then there's going to be a faction of the population, and I think that, you know, as a whole, most people are pretty level-headed. Uh, I think there will be a faction that will look at this, that will understand, you know what, we're in this now, but the economy will get better. And so what other cryptocurrencies are there uh, that will work with banks, that will work with governments, that will help us move money more freely? And my hope is that more people will realize that if they decide to research further, more people will realize that XRP will be that currency. And we could potentially get a whole new flood of people in the XRP army, investing in XRP, seeing its potential. Uh, not saying that is going to happen, but it is an interesting thought because of the situation we're in. We kind of got into this uh, without this situation. We got into it because of the last Bitcoin bull run, I'm assuming, or even, even before that, but I think because of the situation we're in, we could possibly see this go further. And I know the other day, JK Rowling put it out on Twitter, she was interested in what Bitcoin was, and uh, I was kind of uh, shocked by how she responded. People are explaining Bitcoin to me, and honestly, it's blah, 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 collectibles, my little pony, blah, 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 computers, got one of those, blah, 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 crypto, sounds creepy, blah, 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 understand the risk, I don't though. Uh, it just kind of sounds like she isn't taking the effort to learn. I'm sure if you looked at that thread, you would probably, within the first 10 tweets, find a decent explanation of what it is, J.K. Rowling's. So this is kind of, in my mind, a little bit disrespectful, I think. I'm sure you are getting some people joking around, being trolls, whatever, but at the end of the day, do your own research. That's how you're really going to learn about it. Again with this, though, celebrities in cryptocurrency, I mean... Uh, billionaire Tesla chief executive Elon Musk says that the large scale money printing of the central banks is making Bitcoin look good. So, uh, so Elon Musk has even come out and said this, realizes that the printing press can't go on forever, uh, which is making Bitcoin look good. Interesting to see. Uh, and guys, I don't know if you saw this. This is an older video with Chris Larson. This is uh, posted by Status at Twitter, XRP underscore Crow. Uh, take a listen. So just like Bitcoin, Ripple Labs, um, the founders, we can never create any more XRP. That's that's sad. It was set at 100 billion uh, about a year and two months ago now uh, in the ledger. And um, that is decided by the protocol just like it is in Bitcoin. So uh, Rip XRP our math-based currency, just like Bitcoin, is a currency without a counterparty. There is nobody to debase it, cannot be debased, um, deflationary. Um, you know, Ripple Labs, because we don't have the need to reimburse validators, um, started off with the biggest chunk of XRP. And our one of our key roles is making sure that we distribute it as broadly in, in a way that has as much utility and liquidity as we possibly can. I think our incentives are very well aligned, you know, that. Uh, for Ripple Labs to do well, we have to do a very good job in protecting the value of XRP and the value of the network. And that, and that really is the guiding principle here. In order for Ripple to do well, one of the things we have to do is protect the value of the network and protect the value of XRP. This coming from the man, one of the co-founders of Ripple and the executive chairman. So for those of you thinking that Ripple has no interest in XRP, that they were just using it as a scam coin to fund the company, I know that narrative is prevalent out there. We've heard it from Chris Larson. We've also heard it from Brad Garlinghouse. It is in Ripple's interest to make XRP a valuable currency with a problem that it solves, with utility that can be derived from it. So again, this an early interview, I believe it was from... Uh, I don't even want to put a date on here because I don't know exactly, but it was from the early days of Ripple, so thanks so much, XRP underscore Crow, for that. Another oldie but a goodie here, uh, not from that long ago, but this from Steven Mnuchin, and this from Real XRP Boy at Boy underscore XRP on Twitter. Just a friendly reminder, folks. This one from back in February. And specifically on cryptocurrencies, uh, we are spending a lot of time on this on both an interagency basis and with the regulators, we're about to roll out some significant new requirements at FinCEN. Uh, we want to make sure 
that uh, technology moves forward, but on the other hand, we want to make sure that cryptocurrencies aren't used for the equivalent of old Swiss secret number bank accounts. So we share your concern, and you'll be seeing a lot of work coming out very quickly. And again, let me remind you, this is before the beer flu hit the United States. So uh, Stephen Mnuchin obviously on track to roll out more new significant requirements for cryptocurrency regulation uh, on track to do that. Clearly, they got the message not painting cryptocurrency all with one brush. They just don't want people to be using cryptocurrency as the equivalent of the old Swiss bank account. So again, an oldie but a goodie. This isn't current. But are they still on track for this? A lot has happened since uh, February 2020. So it's, it's, it's a question mark, really, it is. The U.S. government has had to deal with a lot. Uh, governments around the world have had to deal with a lot over the last couple of months. So are we going to see crypto regulation sooner or later uh, and blockchain in banks? Are we going cashless or not, guys? Martin Volk brings up a good point, and uh, I believe he uh, took this theory from James Rickard's book, The Road to Ruin. But I wanted to share it with you because I thought it was interesting. So thanks so much, Martin, for tagging me in this. Number one of five, ever stop to think about negative interest rates and why they need a digital banking system to pull it off? Negative interest rates are easy to implement inside a digital banking system. The banks program their computers to charge money on your balances instead of paying. If you put $100,000 on deposit and the interest rate is negative 1%, then at the end of the year, you will have a $999,000 on deposit. Sorry, I meant $99,000 on deposit. Part of your money disappears. Savers can fight negative real rates by going to cash. Assume one saver pulls $100,000 out of the bank and stores the cash safely in a non-bank vault. Another saver leaves her money in the bank and earns an interest rate of negative 1%. At the end of one year, the first saver still has the $100,000, while the second saver has $99,000, essentially losing $1,000 over the year. So he goes on to say this example shows why negative interest rates work only in a world without cash, savers must be forced into an all digital system before negative interest rates are imposed. So we're talking about a digital cashless system and how XRP is going to help facilitate this. This is a bit of a darker side to the same coin. And this is specifically talking about cash. So if we go digital with uh, commodities or you know gold or any kind of asset that we can trade through XRP, uh, crypto will still maintain its value because of its utility. But here's the thing, folks, for most people who hold fiat money, because that's how you pay your bills, this could very possibly be a very bleak looking picture that I'm painting you. Could this be a possibility down the road? Are banks pushing us to go cashless or will we start to see more of this in the future because of this exact thing? Now, I just finished talking about the economy and, uh, how we've seen, you know, the stock market crash, people losing their jobs, record number of unemployment, and the long-term outcome of this, how long is this going to last? Will governments or banks need to take your money by way of negative interest because the economy is so flat? At a point, printing money is not going to work anymore. Uh, so this is a scary proposition, and, uh, you know, this is why a lot of people invest in other things, cryptocurrencies being one of them. Uh, so an interesting theory. Thanks so much, Martin, for sharing this from James Rickard's The Road to Ruin. And an interesting tweet thread here, guys. If you want to get in on the action, I will link this tweet thread in the description. Also remember, if we do go cashless, uh, there will likely be a run on the banks, the same as when there was a run on the banks during uh, in Cyprus in 2013. Let me just bring this up again for those of you guys who haven't seen it. Uh, during that run on the banks, I believe it was March 2013, and why that date is significant is because this is Bitcoin on the daily, guys. And I've just brought you right back to March 2013. Cyprus run on the banks happened in around here. And this is what happened to Bitcoin after that. Now, remember, there wasn't as much liquidity in the market at that time. Uh, but a lot of this, some people were assuming, had to do with that run on the banks. People were investing in alternate currencies because of negative interest rates. So could that happen? Could a cashless society or a negative interest rate put people's faith into cryptocurrencies more heavily? Deflationary currencies, as we've seen in other countries, is something that people are flocking to when their local economies are in disarray uh, and their banks are locking the doors when they're trying to take out cash. So a very, very interesting thing to ponder. Again, guys, I got to thank Martin Volk for that. So just remember, uh, and this from Real XRP Boy on Twitter, I agree, people that enter XRP do so for a reason. They understand what's happening and what's going to happen. Current price levels are a joke. I look at this market as a generational opportunity. Uh, and this just from the PolySign website, the opportunity of a generation. And so uh, the context of this is a little different, but I've heard this before. Cryptocurrency 
is the opportunity of a generation, as Real Boy XRP points out. I did a little bit of research, found some of these articles uh, that point to this. Grandpa had a pension. This generation has cryptocurrency. This from August 2017. I'm not going to read the article. I'm just going to link it in the description. Uh, and here's another one from Forbes. Bitcoin and cryptocurrency investment, a once in a generation opportunity. Think about where you are in life. Think about what you're holding. Think about your future and how this will benefit you and perhaps generations and generations after you. Also remember what Chris Larson said all those years ago when he was talking about XRP and how Ripple is incentivized to add value to XRP to make it a cryptocurrency that has value based on the problems it will solve. Guys, I'm going to end it off here uh, with Sheer Khan on Twitter at Sheer Khan 1981. I feel some of you want to sell or swap their XRP, just don't. We don't know how early or late we are. The best we can do is hodl. We didn't get so far to sell. I have zero doubt about XRP and crypto in general. All we need to have is patience. Is your patience running thin? Are you getting anxious to cash out? I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.